on. Okay, he's got absolutely nothing to do. For the Knight Rider, you can get it for four million dollars at the gas station. All you can do is find it here. It'll spawn right here. It costs four million dollars to buy it, which is pretty expensive, but I will definitely say right now that it is worth your money to buy it. It's worth the time. Effort. What turns most people from the Knight Rider is the horrible cannon. People think it shoots really slow. And to be fair, it does shoot pretty slow when you don't know what you're doing. Most people think it shoots as fast as this. That was 50 rounds over the course of, I don't know, 7 seconds. But with the right technique, you can shoot a lot faster than normal. First way you can do this is by double clicking. If you double click, you shoot like this. going to be a little bit faster than just single fire. Also, if you want, you can use hyper scroll. If you don't know what hyper scroll is, basically bound scroll wheel to left mouse button and you can scroll really fast to make it seem like you're clicking a lot. And basically this mimics semi-auto fire. It'll look like this. That was hyper scroll. And if you really wanted to get a lot of DPS, you could use an auto clicker. That would look like this. Now, auto clicker and hyper scroll look the same right now, but it won't after you see this part. If you want, you can use the same kind of glitch used with the buzzer double missiles, where you hop into the vehicle and out really quick and then get back in again. And basically, if you want to know when you've done this glitch, the turret will be moving before the second engine starts. Here's a demonstration. As you can see, the turret's moving right now. Let me show you what does not If you get in and then get out and then wait too long, the turret's not moving like this right now. You have to make sure that you can control it. This would have What this will do is trick the game into thinking that you have two Knight Riders when you actually only have one. And basically, you'll be able to do exactly double the amount of damage per second as usual. This is what holding left mouse button is like. Even though it looks the same, you're actually dealing twice the damage. As you can see, if I shoot a single shot, he takes two damage instead of just one hit mark. If you want to use double click, it'll look like this. And remember, you're shooting off 100 rounds in that much time, so that's going to be a whole lot better. Here's hyper scroll. Pretty nice. And finally, here's auto click. Now you can definitely see that auto click is a whole lot faster than hyper scroll. And now we're going to do a test. As you can see, it's pretty difficult to hit someone with single fire. I only barely got him a few times, but if you were to use a different technique, say using the auto clicker or using hyper scroll, you could even get someone who's using the jetpack and moving very fast. And basically what you want to do is lead the target a bit since it works like the rhino's cannon. And this is what it'll look like. Very nice. It's the fastest way to do stuff. You can even kill mechs really fast this way. Spawn a new mech. You have to aim right around here. Remember, it doesn't exactly follow the cursor. It's where the cannon looks at. Basically, if you were to draw a laser from the cannon to where it's aiming at, it wouldn't always look exactly like it was hitting there. So I could aim right here and still hit the Mac. That was a lot of damage in a second. And now the mech is dead. If you were to try to use it, then any more damage to you would instantly you can even kill teammate mechs this way. Another thing you can do to increase your DPS is actually by increasing your FPS. They're really directly related in this game. And this can really help you in your battles. 
what you want to do is you want to set your FPS to the exact right amount and that depends depending on how much you can actually aim. We're going to start off with 60 FPS and I'm going to show you how it handles like that. As you can see down here we're going down to 60 FPS. Right now we're hanging out at a stable 59 to 60. This is how fast your auto clip will shoot at 60 FPS. Let's do that again. I want you to note one thing, the recoil is very small, it's almost no recoil right now. If we set our FPS to a lot higher, I'll just uncap it, and let's see how high we can get. It seems like we can get around 280-270 FPS, and you can shoot really fast with this, but there's one drawback to this. Your recoil will become uncontrollable at some point. That's a lot of recoil. Oh yeah, and one thing, if you increase your FPS, any kind of acceleration will become a whole lot faster. So you can see our 0 to 60 is like 0.5 seconds in both directions, but it won't actually increase your top speed. One thing to note is that with your increase in acceleration, it's harder to do turns. See, I'm slipping around and not staying traction, so it's just not going to work like that. What you're going to have to do is to set it to the right FPS, and that's around 80 FPS. 80 FPS will be stable pretty much throughout all graphics settings if you have a good enough PC. You can see we're hanging at, at around a stable 79 to 80. This is what the auto clicker looks like. This is very acceptable recoil if you know how to burst fire. You'll have no problem hitting targets this way, and your acceleration's a little bit faster, your turns are a little bit better, and your DPS is a little bit better. Basically, it's a jack of all trades, and I prefer that over a really high FPS. Another great thing about the Knight Rider's turret is that it has an insane amount of range. Basically, it has the range of an AWP in this game. From this far, it wouldn't look like you're able to hit someone, and you aren't even able to hit them with, a, say, a shotgun or a Tech 9. But with this vehicle, even though it's a little bit inaccurate, you can hit someone from this far. Basically, hitting someone from this far is really difficult because it's really inaccurate, but you'll be able to hit bigger targets like aircraft and stuff. So it's really hard to hit small targets from this far, so what you could easily do is get a whole lot closer. But it's really good for taking out aircraft, and so we're going to just take out this Falcon from really far. Actually, you know what? Falcons are weird. Let's take out this thing right here. That was pretty easy. Let's take out the Nighthawk. That was easy. Now, right now, we're going to be testing against the Nero in terms of speed. So, as you can see, the Nero has a faster acceleration, but if we were to catch up with it right now, you can see that we go at approximately the same top speed right now. And uh, we both have our vehicles fully upgraded. So these are very similar in terms of speed and acceleration. But one thing that I have noticed about the Knight Rider is that it has really good handling. A lot better than that of the Nero. It can make turns really quickly, and it can do a backwards J turn in about half a second without losing much of its speed. I'll just show you some turns. Another great thing about the Knight Rider is that any amount of people can stand on it even if it goes to top speed. And this is interesting because with every other vehicle, if you hit a certain speed, then people will fly off the vehicle as if it were ice. And this happens mostly with the Nero and the Nighthawk, but not really with the Knight Rider. You can go to max speed and the people on your vehicle won't fall off. And this can be good because you can take your entire team on the top of your vehicle. And basically there's no limit to the amount of people who can be on your vehicle. But it can also be bad. 
say if there were a hero who were on your vehicle, then you might have to get them off because they'd start mailing you and if they were just to stay on your vehicle, then it wouldn't work. So what you have to do is you have to do a different technique to get someone off. Go to max speed and they stay on the vehicle. You can start spamming the turret. What this will do is it'll kick them off the vehicle. If you spam forward, it'll do this right here. They will fall off the vehicle. What if, say, it were not your teammate that you wanted to kick off your vehicle and it were a hero, you could possibly turn the turret around and take them out like that one. You know what? Why don't we do that? Your sound will also break sometimes because of how many bullets are hitting him per second. So that's an added bonus. You won't have to hear that annoying Knight Rider engine sound. So basically, there's no way to melee someone out of this vehicle. You're gonna have to use a ray gun or some long range weapon to take them out. One great thing about the Knight Rider is that it can easily push away any other vehicle. It has the highest range power in the game. It's the heaviest car and can knock away any other car, but it can't knock away any aircraft that's in flight, such as helicopters, planes, or stuff like the Heat Seeker. It also can't knock away stock cars spawned by the game because those are pretty much solid brick walls, but it can knock away player spawn vehicles like this one right here. So as you can see, it has a really good ramming power in the game. And it also works against people who are in their vehicles on their own. And if we were to get into head-on collision, he will fly backwards and I will keep him from falling. Or I'll stop and he'll just go somewhere else. And you can bully around SWAT vans this way. If you have enough nitrous, you can keep knocking them into whatever direction you want. Like this. The only thing you can't do is ram a car from behind. Because of lag, you will get hit and they will get hit. One more thing to note is that when you're aiming at your target, you don't want to have them in the center dot right here. It's not going to really help you with your shooting because the turrets are spaced apart. So if you aim like this, you're just going to miss a lot of your shots like this. So what you want to do is you want to have the edge of the circle on your target like this right here. Then you'll be able to shoot them with a little more accuracy. You want to actually have a little more out from the edge like this in order to hit your target. But basically, then accuracy will move it around so you'll be able to hit them a few of the times. So this is what it looks like when you're at the center. A lot of shots missed, but if you have it near the edge, then a lot more shots are going to hit. So remember to always aim to the side of it. And preferably the right side. You can see if I tap fire the turret really fast, it tends to shoot out of the right turret more. And you can see that with hyper scroll. It'll shoot out of the right one a whole lot more than the left one. With the auto clicker, it'll shoot out of the same turrets with the same amount of bullets. So for if you have hyper scroll, just be sure to shoot out of the right one. Another thing about the Knight Rider is that the hitboxes are weird for the turrets. Because the turret aims based on where the cannon is pointed and not where the cursor actually is, it'll look something like this. I could have my cursor right, up, right over here and it would still hit you like that. It's because you're supposed to draw a laser from where the cannon is aimed to wherever it's aimed and that's basically everything it's going to hit. It doesn't necessarily follow where the crosshair actually is. And this can be useful in a number of ways but it mostly makes it harder to aim. Another thing about this is that this vehicle is pretty much bulletproof. You can be shot out from a very tiny space near the top of the vehicle, but other than that, you're bulletproof, meaning you won't have to worry about shotgun spammers or any kind of uneducated noobs who try to take you out of the vehicle. And you may think, what if someone were to stand behind you? The turret's aiming through the vehicle and it can't hit them. Well, actually it can. As you can see right now, the turret doesn't actually have a direct line of sight between him and me, but I can still hit him like that. And what this allows you to do is, you have a full 360 view. There's nowhere that you can't shoot, unless it's directly up. And right here, there's not much of an angle of elevation that you can shoot at. So you can't really aim directly above you. That's the only weak spot of this. But that weak spot can be taken away by just doing 
this, and you can just aim directly up at wherever you were. Hitboxes work in your favor with this vehicle. So this is what it sounds like to be at the receiving end of the turret. It sounds like that. It sounds like someone's hacking because of how many bullets are coming at you. And it's true, there are around 100 bullets coming at you every second, which is really fast. Say you were minding your own business on the ground, nothing's wrong, everything's peaceful, and a Knight Rider would sneak up on you. How fast would it kill you? Well, this is how fast it would kill you. No time to react. So when taking out a Cobra and a Knight Rider, you don't aim for their feet. You aim basically right under their name tag, and that'll easily take them out. So he's just going to aim right around here in order to shoot me out. And you can see he's hitting me right around here. Not at the window, just right outside of the window. And that's how you would take someone out. Another reason that the Knight Rider is such a good ground vehicle is because it helps you not do this thing when you want to take out someone at Crim Base. So you don't have to always just try to hop in and get them using whatever you want. Because you might miss, you see? Oh no, I hit the wall. Sometimes you'll be lucky and you'll hit your target like that, but other than that, you will not hit your target if they're smart. But most people have never seen this vehicle, so they don't know any better. What they'll do is they'll get up close, they might try to shoot your vehicle coming out, but if, say, you can just go inside like this, take them out like that. If they were to get back further, you can just take them out that way too. That's really helpful for getting the crime base. And as you can see, it's gotten stuck in the door. It'll be a bit glitchy when I get into this, but you can keep on shooting inside as long as no one moves it. So that's going to be a very overpowered move. It won't replace the Rhino because the Rhino is just so good at what it does, but it's definitely a lot more versatile. The main reason that I want people to use the Knight Rider is to get rid of the meta, frost, shotgun, AWP, and body armor users, and this vehicle is great at it because it's completely bulletproof except for the tires. You can't be shot out of it unless one person is cheating, they can shoot you through the vehicle. But other than that, I'm pretty sure it's bulletproof. I have taken a few damage, but those were minor inconsistencies. You're not going to get shot out of this anytime soon. And if you always face your opponent, then the tires are very difficult to shoot out. As you can see, it's impossible to shoot it from the front like from the back, it's easier to shoot the tires because they're a bit more exposed, but as we're taking out frost shotguns, it's going to be really easy as long as you know how to aim the target. So he's going to try right now to take me out in any way possible without using vehicles. And basically, remember, you can't aim up high. You have to always get a low angle of attack. So if you want to get a higher angle of attack, you can just turn your vehicle sideways, but that might expose your tires. So we're going to take some shots at him in a second. And that was quick. You won't ever have to worry about frost shotguns again with this vehicle. So as for Knight Rider versus Brown, you always want to have your double vehicles, which as you can see the circles turned white, the cannon was moving, so I shoot at double the FPS. Double the DPS, sorry. And basically what you do against ground targets is always face them. And basically, they can't shoot out their tires however much you try. If they try to RPG you or use the ray gun on you, what you can do is you can just easily move out of the way since that RPG goes really slow. There's nothing they can do about it. Even if they try to hop around, they're not going to get you easily. The only thing they can do is try to spawn a barricade in between them so that your bullets don't actually hit them. But if they just spawn a barricade, what you can do easily is you can just quickly drive up to them and start taking them out this way, and they can't do much to you. If they try to go back into Krim, they can't do anything. It's just not possible to take this thing out on the ground. Another great thing that the Knight Riders get at is stopping other vehicles. If they're in a Nero, they might not actually anticipate you catching up, but what you can do is you can use this to pop their tires easily. And once they come to a complete stop, you can use whatever grenades you want, whatever kind of AoE you want, maybe RPG. 
to take them out of their vehicle and you can keep on pressuring them until they jump out of the vehicle or just try to escape but other than that it's really easy to take out vehicles that are such as cars if they're in a squat it makes the story a little different because you can't necessarily pop their tires but you can bully them by ramming them and they really can't do anything against you because once they jump out to either spawn a new vehicle or try to escape you can just take them out with this cannon right here the best one in the game now in order to do Knight Rider versus Hyperglider what you have to do is you wait for them to make a mistake and they fall to the ground and take them out but I'm not going to test that because that's insanely boring to do because good hyperglider users don't fall down they just stay in the air and camp you out so what we're going to do is a night rider versus a night rider and, and in order to win this scenario you have to have better aim basically you have to have a better cannon and basically you want 80 fps for that really good recoil and that really good cannon Duration and basically what you do is you try to take out the other person's tires as quickly as possible. You can see I'm facing him, he can't shoot out my tires, but I can easily take out his. Now I can take cover and then just keep RBGing him out. And uh, you get the point, he's not going anywhere. Now you may think that it is a bad idea to do a Knight Rider versus a Rhino, and in many ways it is a bad idea because the Rhino is bulletproof, it has tires that can't be shot out even by spike strips and it has a cannon that'll do 80 damage to you even if you miss the shot and basically what you want to do to take out a rhino is first have distractions so they're not paying attention to you then if you aim right around here then you might be able to hit them right here you can hit them like that it's really hard to hit that i've taken someone out that way and i think you saw it in the beginning of the vehicle but overall it's a bad idea to do that a better thing to do would just be to board them like this and either melee them or just keep spamming RPGs. Or you can do that. Either way is fine. The Knight Rider is really good at taking down aircraft. From Nighthawks to Buzzards and even Falcons, this thing can do the job. It, the reason is because it takes 16 shots from any gun to take down an aircraft. And this can range from 16 shots of an op to 16 shots of a shotgun and even 16 shots of this Knight Rider right here. And it's really good for taking down Falcons as well. Falcons are notoriously hard to take down because of their wonky hitbox physics and stuff like that. But it can take down this one easily. To get the most angle of this right here, and easily take them down. And uh, spawn a buzzard, we're gonna try a buzzard against me. And you just do your best to kill me. The Knight Rider is especially good at taking down these things right here because of how quickly you can take them. You can't actually shoot, shoot someone out of Buzzard, but you can shoot people out of Warhawks and Cobras. So if you will spawn a Warhawk right now, I'll show you where you can shoot someone to get them out of a Warhawk. Basically you shoot right above their name tag and then you can deal damage to them. The only problem is, is when they have an invulnerable vehicle, like the invulnerable aircraft glitch, you can't actually take them out. If they're smart and they play their cards right, you can shoot them all you want, but they can just keep shooting missiles at you and you'll never be able to take them down, because they're just going to keep on flying and keep shooting missiles at you. Nighthawks are the most dangerous this way, because they have bombs and they have missiles, which can do a total of 100 and see 180 damage in just one swoop so if you ever see an invulnerable warhawk what you want to do is try to aim right above their name in hopes of trying to find a spot where you can hit them but it's kind of hard to get it's a lot easier with the falcon you can see right there we hit it but it's really hard if you start using auto flip with the double turret macro then you'll start to lag the server and this is really apparent when people try to open their base doors you see if he tries to get in and i'm just spamming this turret it'll prevent it from opening for a bit because of how laggy the server how far behind it is even if you're trying to spawn a different vehicle then it might lag a bit depending on how fast you're shot let's try this again he's gonna try to get out when I've spammed this turret and it'll take a little bit for it to actually open. As you can see it's not opening, but after a few seconds it'll start to open again. 
So don't be that guy who just lags the server for no reason. Try to stick with the uh, hyper scroll kind of stuff if you can. If you have to use auto click, make sure that you're taking out a uh, frost with body armor. Say you were to go up against a Knight Rider, and you were on ground. There's not a lot you think you could do, but the first thing you could do is possibly, if you had one, spawn a Rhino. Because then you could easily deal damage to them, and you could try to shoot them out of it. But if you don't have a Rhino, you can spawn anything like a Camaro for a barricade. Because in this game, geometry is key. You can't be shot at it unless the person is really smart, and they use their turret to shoot under the vehicle because you can actually shoot under the vehicle to get people like this. But most of the time, people aren't smart enough to do this. So if you wanted a PvP Knight Rider, you'd need a good kit. You can't actually shoot them out of the vehicle this way, but you can try to pop their tires. What they're going to do is they're going to try to keep their tires safe. But if you pop them, and they're dumb, you just get up close and you take them out. But just be careful, because this turret can still shoot you even if you're standing on the vehicle like this. So you're going you're gonna to have to get off real quick. And so, if the Knight Rider does get away, what you can do is you can try to run away from it, because there's not much you can do to take out a Knight Rider. If you had a Frost, then you could do something else. Oh yeah, I'm a cop. Okay, not much I can do about this. I can try to outmaneuver his turret by going really fast, and hope he doesn't have good aim. But ultimately, I'm going to have to get back onto the ground and try to do stuff from there. I'm going to spawn a rhino real quick. It's really easy to dodge these, so there's not much you can do about it if they have good aim. Let's try a rhino against it. Well, he's gone. There's not much you can do against the Knight Rider. The best thing you can do is grab a light bike and just run. There's no way to beat this thing unless you have a vehicle that can't be killed by the Knight Rider. And in this way, it's pretty much the most overpowered vehicle in the game. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on how to use a Knight Rider. And as a treat, I'll let you see some roadkill that I got earlier. Enjoy!